For this video, we're going to go over how to create a simple countdown timer. I'm currently using a countdown timer in my presidential slap project, which is used to tell my game manager script when to instantiate a new character into the scene. So here in the inspector, you can see I have two variables. One is called max time and the other is called min time. I then use these two variables to randomly generate the countdown time, and then when the countdown time runs out, that's when I instantiate a new character. So I'll play through my project, and you can see this countdown timer in action. And so as you can see, between every one to three seconds, I have a new character instantiate into my scene. Now just a quick reminder, if you haven't subscribed to our channel already, make sure that you hit the subscribe button and the bell notification so that you can be up to date with all our latest videos. Alright, so now let me show you how to create this simple countdown timer. So to get started, there's three variables that you'll need for your countdown timer. The first two are float fields, which I've made serialized fields in the inspector. The first one is called max time, and the second one is called min time. These two variables will be used to set a randomly generated starting time. And then the third variable is another float variable, which I've called current timer. This variable will be used to hold how much time is left in our timer. So once you have these variables created, the first thing that we need to do is set our initial timer. To do this, you can create a reset timer function, which I have right here. This is a void function called reset timer. And inside this function, all you have to do is set current timer equal to random.range and then pass in your min time and your max time as the parameters. This will pick a random number between these two values and save it into our current timer variable. Once you have this function created, you can then call it within your start function. Once you've initialized your timer, the next thing that you need to do is start the countdown. And this can be done within the update function. And all you have to do to begin your countdown is take your current timer variable and do a minus equals time dot delta time. Time dot delta time is used to tell the time between the current frame and the previous frame of your update function. So subtracting time dot delta time from your current timer will reduce the value of your current timer variable at the rate of actual time. Now at this point, there's a lot that you can do with this countdown timer. You could display the time into a text component, maybe to show the time that's remaining in a sports genre game. But probably the most important thing to do with a countdown timer is to trigger some sort of event when the time runs out. To do this, I have an if statement where I'm checking to see if our current timer variable is less than or equal to zero. If it is, I am then randomly selecting a spawn point for my 2D character, and I'm instantiating a character on that spawn point. So inside this if statement is where you want to add your end of timer event. But an important thing to note is that at this point, you'll also want to add in some sort of check to make sure that this only happens once or it repeats itself. As for a check, you could add a bool variable to this if statement, and if that bool is false, then you could execute this if statement in which you would want to set that bool to then true. But for my example, I want this timer to reset, making a looping timer. And so all I have to do is call my reset timer function. This will then make my current timer variable once again greater than zero and so the only line that will execute in my update function is this first line where we're subtracting time dot delta time and that'll happen until our current timer variable is once again less than or equal to zero now you might be thinking hey isn't this the same as having an invoke repeating call which allows you to call functions at given intervals and i would say yes it is pretty much the same as doing an invoke repeating and normally i would just use invoke repeating if i knew that the time interval 
wasn't changing. And I actually use invoke repeating for moving the snakes in my snake cube game. But for the purpose of presidential slap, I know that the characters are being instantiated at random times, and I want those times to get faster as the game goes on. And so invoke repeating actually won't help me in this case. But doing it this other way makes it a lot more easy to speed up the game over time. All I have to do is decrease the values of my min time and my max time variables. So let's go back to Unity and I'll play through my project one more time. All right, so here you can see that I'm instantiating my characters into the scene every one to three seconds. But if I wanted to speed up that time range, all I have to do is change my max time and min time variables. And so I'm just gonna set them both to zero. And now you can see that the characters are just flying into my scene and I'm going to stop this before it crashes Unity. And so there is how to create a simple countdown timer for your Unity games. Now I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did make sure that you give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions leave them in the comments below. If you'd like access to the code that we've covered in this tutorial then make sure that you go to our website and sign up to become a supporter. You'll then be able to see the code on the related post of this video. And finally, make sure that you subscribe to our channel so you can be up to date with all our latest videos. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.